bow your heads with me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much for today. And thank you for allowing us to be inside and to be going with the crowd and being able to be in the crowd, Lord. I thank you for all the people that have impacted our lives so far today, Lord, our friends, our family, our parents, our teachers and staff members, and all of those that have been a part of our lives, Lord. We just thank you for them and thank you for the impact that they've laid on our lives, Lord. I want to thank you for this wonderful school, for putting it in our lives and for setting up so many opportunities for us, Lord, because they have shown us up in the way that we should go so that even when we are old, we will not depart from it. And that is one of the most important things that a school can accomplish, and I really feel like Osceola has done that. So thank you, Lord, for placing that in our lives. Lord, I also want to thank you for this competitive class. It has built us to be stronger individuals and more intelligent beings here on this earth. And I thank you for the lessons that we've gotten to learn together. Those are very important and we'll always remember those memories and the lessons that we've shared together. Thank you for the opportunities that comes along with this school to be able to speak at graduation or to be able to have such close friends and such tight-knit families to ourselves. Lord, I pray that as we leave this place, we will continue to rise up and be the salt and the light of this world and that we can leave that positive difference in other people's lives when we need them to move forward. I pray that we will always strive for excellence and that we, we will be those God-honoring beings that you have called us to be and reach into the far corners of the earth, Lord. We love you and we praise you and it's in your precious name that we pray. Amen. Good evening. It, it is certainly a privilege to welcome you to our 2021 graduation exercises here at Osceola Christian Academy. I would like to thank our families for all of the support that you have given us over the years. And even more so, thank you for sharing this wonderful group of young people with us. They have indeed been a blessing to us in so many ways. They have much talent and they have worked really hard to fulfill their potential. Uh, as, as we have calculated the uh, merit-based financial aid that they're being awarded to uh, attend schools at the next level, uh, we're currently at a little over $1.5 million that these 34 students have been offered uh, for those qualifying students. <laughs> a little over $60,000 per qualifying student in terms of offers. They are indeed destined for success. We have great confidence that they are going to be difference makers in this world. They've had many people help them to get to this point. Your encouragement and your support of them for serving by their teachers and, and all of those who God has put in their path. When they, when they leave this place tonight as high school graduates, they will begin to embark on a new phase of life, a phase that may seem a little concerning sometimes, may seem a little scary, but again, they are equipped for success. And they won't do it alone. They'll continue to have good encouragement, but most importantly, Jesus Christ will be holding them hand in hand each and every step of the way. They know, as graduates of also a Christian Academy, that putting Christ first is the way to achieve true success. We're extremely proud of them. We love them very much. And again, I want to thank you for being here and uh, participating in this excellent opportunity to support them and welcome you to our graduation ceremony.
I thank all the parents who have invested in our education and our futures here and pushed us to be the very best that we can be. And I would like to thank all of you, family, friends, and everyone in between, for being here tonight to see the culmination of the last 12 or so years of our school. Right. For your sake and mine, I'm going to keep this brief. If anyone starts having deja vu, it's probably because I'm making points very similar to Coach Billy's at that glory yesterday. Bear with me. Forgive me for how cheesy this is going to be. For what it's worth, it's from the heart. I can't speak for everyone here, but I know I got the idea of growing up a little bit wrong as a kid. Looking up at the smart, confident upper class in which I made my role models, I imagined that growing up would just be getting taller, knowing more stuff, and having more homework. But with growth, the world seemed to become more confusing and difficult. I had to ask myself difficult questions. What matters in life? What doesn't? My whole high school experience ended up being a, having a garden of Eden aspect to it. Whether I liked it or not, I found myself taken from the comfortable ignorance of childhood and thrust into a world that could be confusing and difficult. And this was just high school, not even the real world. I realized that nothing would come easily, especially faith. That was definitely going to be that part of it. But I'm here today to tell you that a lot of hard things are worth doing. I'm here to remind you to never let the things that really matter in life get overshadowed by the pursuit of selfish gains or just the drone of everyday life. Now this begs the question, what matters in life? Obviously, that's a hard question to answer. One could almost say it's the question. But bear with me if I reduce it to this. Your relationships with others and your relationship with God. Jesus stated that the greatest two commandments are these, to love God and to love your neighbor. So really take that to heart. There's nothing more meaningful than showing the love of God to others. What does it really mean to show love to others? I like how Paul puts it in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Love is patient and love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. You know, I think every senior class likes the idea of leaving a legacy. I'm not sure that anyone knows exactly what that means. We usually think of it as something to be accomplished by virtue of some great academic achievement, athletic prowess, or sheer charisma. And quite frankly, I think that if any class will be remembered for any of the above, it will be ours. But more than any of that, I know that the relationships we have formed here are strong enough to last a lifetime. I'd like to end with this. I found that it's been easy to focus too much on myself, especially in the competitive environment of high school. But I would like to encourage all of you, especially if you're feeling unmotivated spiritually, to think of others more than yourself. I know, I know, it's cliche, you've heard it a thousand times. But when you consider everything you could be doing to make the lives of those around you better, you realize how much you matter. This is hard. Coming, terms to, with, coming to terms with your own value is difficult. It's so much easier to just tell yourself that your actions don't have consequences. But I can say with confidence that they do. You have all been such a blessing, not only in my life, but in the lives of so many others. Never forget that. Every one of us can have a difference in the lives of those around us, and in doing so, make a real difference in the world. Let us not take that responsibility lightly. I'll end with this. I love you all more than you know, and God loves you more than you deserve. Thank you for being the best class I could ever wish to spend my high school years with.
okay, y'all bear with me if I get a little bit emotional. I'm going to try my best to hold it together. Um, first of all, I'm so honored to be standing here today in front of such a smart group of individuals and friends. Uh, I want to start with James 4, 14 and 15. It says, how do you know what your life will be like tomorrow? What you ought to say is, if the Lord wants us to, we will do this or that. And by God's grace, we've all made it through high school. And there's no other school that I would rather spend these last 15 years of my life in also. Also, it's been like a second home to me, and all of my teachers have played a part in making me who I am today. I first want to thank Mr. Finlayson and all the also staff for making this year possible. After last year, we didn't know if we were going to be able to have a senior year in person, and I'm really blessed to be able to have been here all year and have our activities resume as normal. And I've learned so many lessons while being here also, but today I'm going to talk about eight of them with you. Lesson number one is that the Lord and prayer are the most effective weapons that you can have in your arsenal. I'm so thankful to have this instilled in me from such a young age from Osceola and to be going into college with such a firm foundation. When it comes down to it, you can't rely on athletic ability, outward appearances, or even education. And the only steadfast thing in your life is going to be God. Lesson number two is that getting all A's here does not make you valedictorian. I'm fortunate enough to be in a class that has challenged me academically. Mr. Womble was right when he told us that we were a smart group of kids, as he usually is right. I'm really not sure how I'm the one up here, but I guess that goes back to lesson number one. Lesson number three is that teachers are experts in catching you doing things you're not supposed to be doing. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that every time I forgot to wear my mask this year, I passed Mr. Finlayson in the hall, which was at least twice a week. Thank you, Mr. Finlayson, for always extending grace to me. Lesson number four is that determination and hard work really does pay off. Like I said, this class is extremely intelligent and versatile, and having the work stay at the top has allowed me to excel in other areas of my life, especially radio, which everyone knows is so important to me. And putting in countless hours of time and work is not always appealing, but if you don't have rain, you can't have flowers. Lesson number five is that it really takes a village. I'm extremely thankful for our senior group chat. <laughs> but for real, I cannot be standing up here without y'all. We really help each other out, and I'm so thankful for you guys. Lesson number six is senioritis. I know a lot of people in here have probably heard this term before, but I'm here to tell you that it's real. And personally, I've had it all year. I know some of my classmates longer than just this year. <laughs> but, um, after the senior trip is when it really starts to kick in. Eight in the morning starts getting real early. Absolutely, the parties start popping up. And meeting deadlines for colleges become so stressful that we forget we have actual classes and work that we have to do. But thankfully, we all push through and we made it. Now, lesson number seven is that also is not like any other school. This, we're all like one big family. The teachers really care about you. Personally, both my English teacher, Jane Mokase, and my volleyball coach, Kathy Waters, have come to barrel races to watch me run. They help you with struggles, not just inside school, but outside too, and they're always here to listen if you need them. And to my class, we've all grown up together, and we've been, a lot of us have been together since K-5, so I'm since we were three. And even to the people who just got here this year, last year, we're all so close, we're just like family. It feels like we've been together forever. It's going to be so strange not spending every day with you. But I know you all have bright futures, and I pray that you all follow God's plan for your lives. Lesson number eight. This is a quote from the one and only Mr. Hart. And a lot of people in here won't know why I'm quoting this, but my class is going to get it. And he really made a good point here. Don't go out for something just to make a lot of money. Okay. It's, um, <laughs> to do that. God has put something in each one of you a desire for you to do something according to his plan. And if you change that and do something you don't like just to make a lot of money, you're going to be miserable. I want to close with Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. And thanks to Coach Adams, I know this verse by heart. It's trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do and he will show you which path to take. To my teachers, thank you for all the encouragement over the years for giving grace when it was not deserved, and for being amazing role models and loving each one of us. To my classmates and the graduating class of 2021, you guys are my brothers and sisters. I may be going 10 hours away, but I'm a phone call away from you guys need me. 
I'll always look back on these last 15 years with a smile because you guys have made them memorable. I love you all and I'm so proud of you. I pray that you never forget lesson number one as you begin the next chapter of your lives and you always lead by example. We did it, you guys. Traveling at 186,000 
282 miles per second. Let there be radio waves, microwaves, and x-rays. Let there be photosynthesis and fiber optics. Let there be LASIK surgery, satellite communication, and suntans. Oh, and let there be rainbows after rainstorms. I put the book down and I almost fell off my boat. It was then I realized, of course, these two very different students were still very much lights. It was then I realized I was exactly where I needed to be, doing exactly what I needed to be doing when I get to pour love into a class like this. See, I had forgotten the scientific definition of a light. I had forgotten about the spectrum of light. I had forgotten about the varying speed, frequency, energy, and wavelengths of light. Of course, those students were such lights. They were just different types of lights with a different purpose in life. So here's where our metaphor really takes off. I have three truths I need you to know and live as you go into this next season of life being a light. Our first truth. Know that you are an absolute light. Know that every bit of you was carefully knit over nine months and that you've been perfectly created for a specific purpose in this world. The world needs exactly who God created you to be. So don't hold back, don't water yourself down. Go unapologetically and boldly into the world with a spirit of power, love, and confidence. To be anything less than you, to give anything less than your best, would be to sacrifice the gift. Most of you are still navigating the complexities of figuring out exactly who you are, and you might flounder there for a while, and that's okay. But if you can live one truth about yourself, let it be this. You, you are a light, and you were created with God's seal of perfection. On to our second truth. Sharing your light does not exhaust your light. No, not at all. In fact, it can only strengthen it. If your church does candlelight service for Christmas, or if you were here last night, then you know exactly how quickly one little flame can illuminate a really dark room. So get excited about sharing your beautiful light. The world can be a scary place, and it needs warriors like you now more than ever. You might just be the reason someone believes in selflessness, kindness, goodness, or God's love. Now on to our third truth, and this one is my favorite. Both God and Shakespeare comment on this little fact, so it must be a big deal. No amount of darkness can overcome light. You know, the light shines in the darkness and the darkness cannot extinguish it. We've talked about it before in class and it's something that really excites me. See, vision scientists at Columbia University made a claim that if unencumbered by the horizon and other factors like light pollution and trees, and in complete darkness, the human eye can detect a flickering candle up to 30 miles away. What? That's insane! So, as you go into this next season, know that things will get dark. Really dark. Like, I can't find my way, and I think I'm all alone, and I'm scared of that dark. And in those nights, or in those seasons, remember that darkness has not, will not, and cannot overcome light. Readjust your eyes on God and your light for God. You never know who is also lost in the darkness and following your little light to God's gift of salvation. Class of 2021, Four years was a long time together, and individually, you each have a very special piece of my heart. I'll be sad not to see your beautiful lights shining at school next year, but there's so much comfort in knowing that you are exactly what the world needs right now. There's solace in knowing that you're ready, you're sharpened, you're refined, and you're prepared for new challenges to take you to new places. Actually, not only are you ready, you're needed. See, these new places might not know the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God, and in these new places you will shine your light, and you'll illuminate really dark places of the world. And you'll show that our God is always a God of love and mercy, and never of hate or punishment. And with that exciting conviction, I'm about ready to kick you out of this gym and send you off to Magnolia, to Mount Berry, Atlanta, Decatur, Valdosta, Tallahassee, Pensacola, to Lakeland, to Jacksonville, Gainesville, and all the places in between and beyond. But go with our three truths. Know that you are light. Know that this world needs your light. And know that no darkness can ever overcome your light. And wherever you go, go that we are always here cheering you on. Thank you for the last four years and for sharing so much with me. Thank you for giving me 34 beautiful, shiny reasons to love my job. Parents and grandparents, families, thank you for sharing your precious lights with us and for trusting us to keep them safe and help them grow brighter. So class of 2021, my original cherubs, for the last time I get to tell
tell you all at the same time, and this is so bittersweet, but enjoy the rest of your day, and please, make good decisions. <laughs>
Anna Lee Trask. Mr. Slaughter, members of the board, faculty, parents, and honored guests, it is indeed my privilege and honor to present to you the 2021 Also a Christian Academy graduating class.